Good morning. Could I just have your attention for a while, please? Um, just in case we have to make a, a swift exit. Um, obviously, the, the main exit is there. There's a, the, the exit through the hall, and there's this exit down the bottom here. Um, at, at communion, um, if you wait until you're directed to come to communion by one of our stewards, that would just help the flow of things nicely. I think that's about it. Just enjoy the day. Thank you.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, it's a really great pleasure to welcome you to our celebration of the Chrism Mass this, this lunchtime. Um, the first time that we've done it, if you like, properly in, in three years. So it's really good to have you. And I'm very grateful that so many of you travelled from quite long distances, from all the parts of the diocese. So if you like, the whole of the local church of the Diocese of Middlesbrough is represented here at this Mass today as we gather to bless the holy oils. So as we begin our celebration, let's call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, for the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom for those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord, a day of vengeance from our God, to comfort all those who mourn and give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then, be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God 
who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak. This test is being fulfilled today even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for the blessing. If I turn my mind back to the Mass of Chrism last year, I began by sketching the ominous dark storm clouds through which we were passing due to COVID-19, lockdowns, scandals in society, politics, and even scandals in the church. Until recently, relative, uh, in, until relatively recent, sorry, I thought that in this year's homily, I might begin by alluding to light at the end of the tunnel or the silver lining surrounding those storm clouds. Then came even more foreboding events of Russian troops gathering on the borders of Ukraine and then the constant news of the invasion of Ukraine and the terrible atrocities being committed there by Mr. Putin and his comrades. And on top of that, there is the woefully inadequate response on behalf of the leaders of the free world, who recognize that either it's a game of gesture politics or out and out world war. And we're still in that balance, desperately trying to avoid another European world war that no one will win in the end. 
And I admit that I find the present situation terrifying, especially when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and begin to fret about it all. I describe the, the West's response as woeful. However, I personally can't think of a better solution at this moment. With hindsight, we can say that we should never have allowed ourselves to get into this position. We should never have allowed ourselves to become so complacent. We've been foolish to become dependent on despotic nations and lured into a mortal trap by greed. Where shall we turn? Who will help us and rescue us from this terrible state in which we find ourselves? It was so heartwarming to be called to prayer by Pope Francis on the Feast of the Annunciation. And it's so obvious that this situation demands something more than diplomacy, politics, or even military strategies. I'm sure we all gratefully joined in that solemn consecration of the world, Ukraine and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Just let me remind you of what we confessed in that act of consecration. O Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, you never cease to guide us to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Yet we have strayed from the path of peace. We have forgotten the lesson learned from the tragedies of the last centuries, the sacrifice of the millions who fell in the two world wars. We have disregarded the commitments we made as a community of nations. We have betrayed people's dreams of peace and the hopes of the young. We grew sick with greed we thought only of our nations and their interests. We grew indifferent and caught up in our selfish needs and concerns. We chose to ignore God, to be satisfied with illusions, to grow arrogant and aggressive, to suppress innocent lives and to stockpile weapons. We stopped being our neighbors' keepers and stewards of our common home. We have ravaged the garden of the earth with war. And by our sins, we have broken the heart of our Heavenly Father, who desires us to be brothers and sisters. We grew indifferent to everyone and everything except ourselves. Now with shame, we cry out, Forgive us, Lord. What a powerful confession. What a powerful act of repentance. So who will help us and rescue us from this terrible situation in which we find ourselves? To whom do we turn? Well, to the one whose promise is never broken. To the one who speaks all truth to us to the one who is with us until the end of the age, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Unrolling the scroll, Jesus found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak. This text is being fulfilled today even as you listen. This is what Jesus said in the synagogue at Nazareth. This is what Jesus said in the assembly in St. Mary's Cathedral 
in the Diocese of Middlesbrough today. This is what Jesus is saying to our world now and over the celebrations of the sacred Triduum and Easter. So we have a choice. Either we believe that the Lord is telling us the truth, that his promises are sure, or we might as well walk away here and now. He's come to bring the good news to the poor, the captives, the blind, the downtrodden. This is the year of the Lord's favour, and it is happening right now among us all. Is it true? Or is it a lie, a hoax? Make your mind up. And I speak especially to those whose ministerial role it is to preach and instruct. If we don't truly believe in what we are preaching, then we are a sham. We're useless. We're empty and hollow. We can ramble on and use all sorts of fancy sounding words, but they will be meaningless and tedious. In this dark age, Jesus is the only true light of hope and it is his good news we must endeavour to preach to bring that freedom, that sight and the Lord's year of favour to all who are willing to receive it. However, we're all witnesses to this good news. All those who are gathered here today and those who will gather throughout the world to renew the Paschal mystery in their lives. We are all anointed. We are all called. We have to proclaim the good news of Jesus, the truth of Jesus, the sure promises of Jesus, which despite the circumstances in which we find ourselves, is being fulfilled even now as we listen. O oh God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Can I ask the priests to stand, please? <clears throat> Beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Amen. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. Amen. I'm going to ask brothers and sisters if you'll stand, please. As for you, dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gift abundantly upon them, 
and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my loneliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us shepherd and flock to eternal life. oil of the sick.
catechumens. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive, <clears throat> they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we do give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <coughs> to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, who we bestow on the world all that is good. Most Reverend Father, we present this oil to you. We ask you to bless it for the anointing of those who are sick, to give them comfort, healing, and strength. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayers of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body and soul may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this be the body of your life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. We beseech you, almighty God, that those who renew you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
most reverent Father, we present this oil to you. We ask you bless it for those who are preparing for baptism, that they may be anointed with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Saviour. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life, and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most Reverend Father, we present this oil to you. We ask you to consecrate it for the celebration of the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and holy orders, and for the dedication of altars for the celebration of the Eucharist. I'm going to pour this beautiful perfumed balsam into the oil, which will permeate the richness of the oil which in a way is like the symbol of the Holy Spirit, who those who are anointed with the holy oil, the Spirit will permeate them, fill their whole life, fill their whole being. Let us pray that God, our almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your church. In the beginning, at, the, at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees. From the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil would bring us in the sacrament of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of all people, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with your joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. This too foreshadowed greater things to come. After your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove. And by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have, con you have created. Fill it with, with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that chrism takes its name. And with chrism you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam 
And when they are anointed with this holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Most Reverend Father Terence Patrick Draney, by the grace of God and the Apostolic See, Bishop of this Holy Church of Middlesbrough, will give the apostolic blessing with a plenary indulgence in the name of the Roman Pontiff to all present who are truly penitent and have confessed their sins and received Holy Communion. Pray God for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis our Bishop Terence Patrick, and for Holy Mother Church, and strive by holiness of life to work to walk in full communion with her. The Lord be with you. And with Through the intercession of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.